Hey everyone, what's up, what's up? Thank you for tuning in. Hello, Brittany, thank you for coming today. Super excited for you to share your story. <gasps> how is everyone doing today? Brittany, how are you? I'm great, enjoying my day off. <laughs> Yay, I love it. Well, you're getting educated on your day off, so that's amazing. I know, I know, it's a, it's a day off, but it's a packed day, so. Yes. Yes, isn't that how it works? We find ways to fill our time no matter what's happening. <laughs> I was thinking about that today. I'm like, my husband's day off. He's like, just laugh. He's just relaxing my day off. I like start early in the morning and I finish right up until he gets home. But I love it. Right? Badass. I love it. That's amazing. Well, I'm going to give you a proper introduction so that people understand exactly like even what we're just saying, right? Like you're a go-getter, you fought, like you go for what you want and you work hard for it and you show up. So uh, Brittany is the CEO of Faithful Fitness by Brittany, a nurse-led holistic wellness company that specializes in creating, creating easy, efficient, sorry, easy, effective and enjoyable wellness and exercise programs. Utilizing her nursing background, she frequently works with people who have medical conditions, injuries, or those who have little to no exercise experience. She has been a registered nurse for over 12 years, working in the pediatrics, uh, wound care, weight loss, and post anesthesia. She is also certified as a health coach, a personal trainer, and a life coach. The trifecta right there. Um, you can find her spending time with her hubby and her fur baby, traveling the world, passionately working with her clients, drinking coffee, and eating delicious food. She leads several medical, she has led several medical mission trips to Ecuador and now hosts wellness retreats in Costa Rica. Brittany is a firm believer that our past struggles can be used for victory to serve others. Yes, and amen. That is so freaking true. I love it. Super excited. Yay. Well, Brittany, thank you again for making time. I know that your schedule is busy today, especially, and I'm super excited for you to, you know, share more about who you are and your story and that kind of stuff. So I love, I love to um, start out with whatever you want us to know that's an interesting fact about you so it can be something um related to your story it can be something totally off the wall and random you tell us what is something interesting about you'd like us to know i'll do a current interesting thing i think it's interesting so i went from pre-covid running my business full-time and doing nursing a little bit like a few days a month at most so I was doing personal training, health coaching, everything in person. And then COVID hit. So now um, in Baltimore from Florida, came up from Florida, fortunately got to come with my husband, but we're up here working a COVID crisis assignment. But I think the interesting fun fact is that it's been awesome. Like not obviously the COVID aspect of it. Right. But being able to go with the flow and spend more time with my husband and now work my business virtually, which I know you do a lot of, right? Yeah. It has a lot of, it has a lot of perks as well. So that's been cool. That's amazing. Well, first of all, uh, thank you for everything that you're doing with reacting and, and being active in helping as much as you can with the COVID crisis experience that's happening. I mean, that's in itself, like, thank you. We need definitely people like you that are stepping up to, to do what you do. And, um, I think it's awesome that you and your husband get to spend this time together and that you do have that time to now figure out the virtual side more. And I love, I love when people are able to find the silver linings in the crisis especially because there's a quote that I saw that was like, never let a, a crisis, never let a good crisis go to waste and like find the growing pieces in the negativity that's, that's happening because they're always going to come up, but it's really that how you grow through it. So absolutely. I think that's great. Yeah, I think COVID's been a good opportunity to really step back and look at some of the things that were ready actually to change and to grow into something else. So it definitely has been an opportunity to look at priorities. 
Yes, absolutely. If that is, I mean, I'm so I'm in the middle of my 75 hard challenge and it's day 38. And like, that is something that, you know, not just because of COVID, but I had a friend, I was like, I need to, I need to challenge. I need to get out of my mind. Like I need to, I need to do something that's really focused. And she offered it to me, I was like, yes. And like, I don't know how to, like in different situations, how long it would have taken me to say yes to something like that. Just knowing like in the state of being with my three kids all the time. And now my husband working from home virtually, like it was just something that, that I was like, yeah, that's what I need. What and is the 75 days? days? Yeah. 75 hard is um, committing 75 days to doing two workouts every single day. Oh um, 45 minutes each. One must be outside. Um, a gallon of water. A progress picture. 10 pages of an entrepreneurial nonfiction book. Not an audio book. It has to be a physical book. 10 pages. And then um, picking a nutrition plan and sticking with it. No cheating. Um, no deviating from it. Um, full on commitment. And if you miss any of those steps or you cheat, you start over at day one. And it's for 75 days? Correct. I'm a wellness coach and a fitness coach, and that is too intense for me. Good for you. You go, girl. You are yeah. dedicated. Yeah, <laughs> that, that is definitely one of my strong points is that, like, I'm, I'm not a, I don't do well with dabbling. Like, I am full in or I am, like, half-assed and I check out easy because – I need, I need like big challenges to really test me, to, to get me excited and, and move me. And um, the, the cool thing about it is that my first thought, which might be where you're going, Brittany, is like the first thought is like two workouts, like who wants to do two workouts like that? And the cool thing about the challenge that I realized and why I said yes is like one of my 45 minute workouts and my outside for sure is always a walk. Walk. Okay. You know, it doesn't have to be a high intensity 45 minutes t twice a day. That's not what it says. It says, pick some movement, basically, right? Like, get your body in motion for that's 45 different. minutes yeah, twice a day. So I was already walking for 45 minutes, every, uh, not every day, but then I was like, okay, this is just really putting a fine point on the healthy habits that I have in my life. But right, I was loose about them. It was just like, oh, do I feel like it today? No. Do I want that piece of cake? Yes. Like, loose with it. And so this was a full long commitment. And I was like, I need the mental toughness challenge to just know, like, I'm in charge of my life. This is the something that I can control. And I'm kind of a control freak. So it worked. And those like drastic kind of things like that, for me personally, it's not something that I like to do all the time, but it has been those times where I've done something super intense to up level and transform my yeah. life. So even though you may not stick with this hard 75, 75 hard for the rest of your life, right? You probably won't, but there'll be habits and things that you're going to take from that that will probably always be with you because it yeah. is so intense. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that's the same thing with the, the meal plan too. So, you know, you pick what that is. It's not that it's anything real. You can be like, oh, I want to eat, I want to cut sugar from everything. And you're, you're just not eating sugar for 75 days, right? But my, like, I go to the next level and I made it super intense, but we'll, we'll talk about that later, okay. but <laughs> 75 hard is no joke. And I'm, I'm really proud that I'm uh, day 38 and I'm just like, you should yes. be proud. You should be super proud. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, so enough about me, but like, let's, let's dive in and, and let's start talking about fear and like what that looks like for you. So tell us about a significant time in your life when fear held you back from living your life fully? I would say my teenage years for sure, even up into early 20s. Like okay. definitely lived from like strongly from a place of fear. And like, I wouldn't tell you that at the time. I wouldn't be, right. I would be like, I'm fearless. <laughs> Don't you see how I'm living my life? <laughs> right? Look back you know in retrospect and look so many choices that I made from who I dated to how I ate and how I felt about myself to the activities that I engaged in were really fear-based and yeah it was hard 
it was hard and it was a time where like even though it was hard a lot of times I wouldn't acknowledge that it was hard and I just put up the facade that it was fun and I was I'm making these choices and even though I was making those choices they were really like fear-based yeah isn't that isn't that um interesting because so the interesting piece to me is that so many times we mask the emotions that we're feeling and that we feel like we're just supposed to be showing up in a certain way and that's how we lose our identity or we aren't able to find it in general because that's just kind of like how we started out like as a teenager so like how old were you when you when you would say like was this like always through your teens into your like I said probably like 13 when I started like dating guys when I started getting into guys and I was a wild teenager <laughs> but I think like I know now looking back decisions that I made early on I use those as a label so I labeled myself as a certain way and I stuck in those patterns yeah and so I was uh, afraid I wouldn't have told you like I said I wouldn't have thought of it as fear then but I was afraid to ex ask for anything better for myself really because I was afraid maybe I wouldn't get it you know or I'd be rejected or it would be too hard to stick with it'd be too hard to stick with we'll say eating healthy or moving more regularly when really it was so hard to do all the crap I did and deal with the consequences of it right dealing and that's like the self-awareness and like dealing with our decisions and our choices and all of the emotional baggage that goes with all of those things and that's so I'm curious now too like knowing that we started out talking about your husband's with you and that kind of stuff so like how did you I'm curious I always love asking how did you and your husband meet we met at the hospital and it's I always say it's interesting that it's great that I'm married to him. He's an incredible guy. But had I not started doing the work on myself and addressed a lot of the fears that I had, there I know good and dang well the way I'd be married to a man like my husband who is incredible. Because <laughs> I just yeah, wasn't even on my radar. You know, I right. wanted to date the bad boy or the person that I really needed to fix, that kind of thing. And we You're met at the hospital. <laughs> really, we met at the hospital working night shift. And the thing that's perky about him was he was interested. I was hosting a mission trip at the time, which again, like that was like a new thing because I started doing all this work on myself. I never would have even thought I could do that. And he was interested in that because he had done them. And normally, like I said, this wouldn't have even been a, a thing. <laughs> I would have been like, who is this guy? He's weird. But because he was interested in that, not just interested in like, let's go out and party. I, I, made me interested in him and then we developed a friendship and got engaged nine months later and here we are <laughs> oh my gosh you literally just like spoke my story that's hilarious minus the <laughs> hospital and the, and the telephone <laughs> like it was nine months for my husband and i too that's hilarious really? um, oh, cool. yeah. yeah i did i took a like a, a solid year before we like became boyfriend and girlfriend i have a little longer than that really because okay. I, I knew that I needed to get my crap together because I could have keep just dating. Like, seeing the same patterns come up and yeah. come up, come up, come up was a red flag. Like, it, it's going to keep happening unless I figure something out to do something different in my life. And so that's what I did. I really worked on myself and then found an amazing guy. So that was awesome. Yeah. So, what I, what, so for those of you that are watching, like, this is the teachable moment I want to pull from this is that, you know, we become self-aware and then we decide that we're gonna make a better choice and that we're gonna move in the direction of the vision that we have for ourselves and who we want to be um, to start moving out of that space of where we are right because we are, we're always a work in progress and we're always looking to, to be better but we have to be aware of where we do want to improve in our lives to be able to make the decisions that support that. So I, would say um, I journaled him up. I'm like, I've been journaling about you the past year. And then yeah. now here you are. And so many things are like, it's amazing. Oh, wow. <laughs> I had that vision and here you are. Yeah, no, that is amazing. That is something that I'm literally like, so I've, I've 
had mentors and everyone talking to me about, you know, how the power of journaling and all these things. And I'm like, yeah, that's so great. Cause I'm, I'm a note taker. I have five notebooks in front of me right now. Um, and I, so I, that's natural for me, but like to actually get my thoughts out and, and, and think about things in a different way. And, um, I will say literally that is something that has transformed me in the process of during COVID is that I dedicated, um, to journaling my thoughts during COVID, just even if it was two sentences a day to talk about my emotions, what I was feeling, what experiences I was having. Um, and that literally has like been something that has moved things in my life that I would have never known were there had I not wrote them down. I love how much action you take with three kids and a husband at home. And I know you have your business and i'm sure you can do plenty of other things that i'm not even aware of and you still like have the time to do all this girl 4 a.m 4, 4 a.m <laughs> that's, that's what my that's what my uh, 75 heart is brought out i was it was five and then it was 4 30 and then it's like nope i need 4 a.m like i need three solid hours of no one in my existence but who i Good like for you <laughs> we have lots of talking to do after this <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. So, so I want to dive in a little bit deeper too. So like thinking about where you were mentally during the time of, you know, going through the motions, dating all the wrong people, feeling all of that, you know, and, and finally like realizing it where, like, how did you feel about yourself? Like when you started to be aware of it, how were your feelings towards yourself and like your mental status with all of it? I would say even during it, like I dealt with so much guilt, so much shame, like embarrassment. And I felt really out of integrity. I don't know how many times up until like the last seven years or so, but before that, that I would say, I feel like I have two different lives. Yeah. Like there's just one part of me that's this way. And that's part, that's me. And then there's this other part that's like totally different too. So I felt really conflicted all the time. I felt like I was showing up like as an imposter, I guess, you know? Um, but it's interesting, and I've never thought about this before. I feel like I was an imposter when I was showing up in good light. So when I was getting good grades and being polite and like that, I felt like was an imposter. But when I was showing up like life of the party, party girl, hey, like I didn't feel like that was an imposter, which is, possibly is interesting I guess I w wasn't letting my light shine and was embarrassed of it and felt like I wasn't worthy of it because there was this other side of me um which I can say a bit a thing now I know I'm digressing is like knowing that there are other there are aspects of us there is a light part of us and there is a darkness but and we don't have to be ashamed of the darkness which yep. I was just so ashamed of like I didn't want anything in the light to know anything about the dark stuff and so really the peace came when i was able to say like yeah i like, own it like heck yeah and then realizing every single person has their dark stuff like we're, mm -hmm. i'm not alone in all this stuff and oh what was i like feeling so ashamed about and then that was so healing in itself yeah you're you're in the dark with everybody <laughs> like we're all in the dark <laughs> we're all like in the dark hiding <laughs> yeah, yeah i'll borrow you my flashlight right like <laughs> yeah exactly exactly um, oh but it, it was really for me huge to not feel that way anymore and yeah. when i once i felt like started doing the inner work and the healing yeah realizing what a physical link there was too i remember yeah. when i first started hearing about like the mind body soul connection and you know my background's nursing so i was a nurse right. already when it's so a very science-based medical medicine science and somebody said like thyroid could be caused by possibly another another can like it could be you're not accessing your voice and i'm like no thyroid condition is very specific your thyroid levels are off like there's no other way like right. could not wrap my mind around it but for myself like I had heartburn all the time since I was an early teenager, like bad, 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 bad indigestion. And to get rid of that without doing anything different and not needing acids every single day, just right. from like dealing with my shit, 
really <laughs> was amazing and showed me that on top of the emotional crap, there was so much physical crap too. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. So, so, okay. Obviously we know that the relationship with men shifted. Was there any other relationships, um, that shifted in significant ways in your life? Um, when you were transitioning out of like, or I should say like when the awareness was there, right. And you were ready to make a change. Was there any other relationships other than with men that shifted specifically in your life? Good or bad? My relationship with myself, for sure. And I could speak on that for days. Friends. Yeah. I did lose some friendships. Um, and it just made me realize that people are there for a season and serve. Like, you serve a purpose for them and they serve a purpose for you. And it's okay. But that was hard. Yeah. Um, you know, growing apart from people that, you, you know, used to be super close with, um, but also gaining new friends and like having, I have an amazing network of friends now. I'm like, this is so cool. I have awesome friends who do amazing things and they're still fun. And so that's been really cool. Um, my relationship with the people closest to me when I very first started like becoming aware and like working on myself, they were strained for sure. Uh, I think part of it was because I wanted everybody to do this work. <laughs> and another, right. part of, another part of it was because I was showing up so differently than what they'd been used to. And yeah. I think that was scary and uncomfortable for them. Yeah. So was there any, um, like, profound thing that happened? Or, you know, what really compelled you to jump ship from letting the imposter syndrome kind of take over and, and, and let you sit in that fear for, for that amount of time, right? Like what compelled you to make the shift? Such a great story. So I'd say like over a course from like 21 to 27, I was growing out of the imposter phase and coming into like being more real and merging up my life, if you would say. Uh, and then at 20, I think it was about 27, so this was like seven years ago, I was dating a guy who I knew that I had no business dating. Like I knew I had no business dating him. All my friends loved him. He was the life of the party. We were having so much fun together. And I remember even telling one of my friends, like, something is off with this guy. Something is so <laughs> off. And she said, no, don't you think it's just because of your past relationships that you're bringing it into this one? I'm like, no, I don't, but whatever. I'm like, I just having a great time. Who cares? I'm not going to marry this guy. This is fun. And then I'll just leave it uh, at this. I went to pick him up from the airport and he never showed up. And it's a whole crazy story. But anyways, I've never seen him ever again. And he was in trouble. And it was a huge, like, if I had gone with him on this trip, I would be in trouble probably just by association. Yeah. And at the time we had a mutual friend. We were actually both my friend. Um, we're supposed to go with him and we, and we both did it. And my friend had gotten really into transformational work and he already was like super awesome. He's an aerospace engineer, but I saw him just like taking his life to like a whole new level. And he'd always ask us, what do you guys want with your life? We were supposed to do this training together. And I, I knew that it was, it was a weekend right after I did this guy went to MIA and I was like so distressed, like so upset with myself for being so like just denying what I knew to be true. Yeah. Turning my back on my intuition again and putting myself in such a like position to just be screwed and like just, Oh, I was just so frustrated and also sad because I did care about the guy. And I knew I could either go to Sunfest, which is this party festival in Florida, and like do what I always do, just have a great time, go out on the boat, or I could do something I'd never done before. And I went into this like personal development training and then it was like amazing uphill from there. It was like down, down or, or up the rabbit hole, I guess. So up the it was like when I was sitting in that chair yeah. and the and the trainer was speaking, I was like, oh, I was just like goosebumps. Like, oh, I was so supposed to be here. I remember he said something like, you want a 10 relationship, but you don't even show up as a 10 in your own life. How do you ever expect to get a 10? And I was like, well, like, 
I don't know. He just talked real talk to everybody, but it is. Yeah. I was like, oh God, <laughs> I was ready for it. <laughs> that is amazing. That is so, that's, that's awesome because the, one, right? Like you were able to finally see it. Sometimes it takes really like crazy things to happen to us, COVID, for people to really like step into what the next space is for them. So um, I love that you know, it, it was to a point where you were like, yeah, I had no choice other than to just like see it and know that my gut was right and my intuition, I, I can't turn my back on that. So would you say like since then you've really paid attention to your intuition? Is that something that's been pulled through since then? Like you mentioned that. So obviously it was something that was really prevalent to you. Like, do you still find yourself absolutely trusting your gut or I'll stream my question into there too and just say like, what advice would you give the viewers for, you know, the fears and the things that are holding them back currently? Like what advice would you give them? I would say definitely I trust my intuition a lot more. And there's a distinction. I, I like, cause you know, people can say like, I trusted my gut before and it led me astray, but I don't think that that's actually true. I think when you really go with your intuition, there may be some apprehension still. I don't know if apprehension is the word. There may be those voices though that come up like, oh my God, what are you doing? But you still have that, yeah. I still have that inner peace about it. And there's like, like an inner knowingness. And even if it doesn't necessarily make sense up here, like it feels right, if that makes sense. And, and I know for some people, they may not know what I'm talking about. So I'm trying to <laughs> think of other ways. Because for me, it's like a feeling. Like, even if it's like, yeah. it's kind of crazy that I'm just going to up, uproot and go to Baltimore. You know what I mean? But I knew, like, you just, like an inner knowing. And then the mind could be like, but that doesn't make sense. Blah, 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 blah. That's the but fear. It, yeah, that's the fear. Of like, but this could happen. That could happen. This could happen. But if you, like, and, and, and things, sometimes things align and sometimes things don't align smoothly. But I do find that if that's the path and you're intuitively guided there, like, things will align, even if you do face obstacles. Because, let's face it, there'll be some obstacles along the way, yeah. for sure. <laughs> but, like, like, getting back to that, to that inner knowing, because that is there that's our, that's you know our light that's the truth and the fear yeah. will just take us away from greatness <laughs> yeah so would you say that um so is journaling something that you've done before like you've always done is this a new thing would you say journaling is a huge piece for you in following your gut and asking yourself some more deep questions in, instead of like reacting or i journal like even as a teenager i would journal and then it was a lot more self-expression and like really just like coaching me through feeling bad yeah. about myself and like what like journaling it out because i find that journaling allows you to fully express your thought and emotion and get in there deeper whereas the thoughts may be really fragmented and not complete um and now i use journaling i use it a lot for manifesting now so like writing i am and like creating the life that i want yeah. And I will use it to work through fear though, to like get through like, like the logical part, kind of like the same thing I did even through my teenage years, like talk myself through, okay, well, I'm feeling this way, but I'm probably feeling this way because, and then you just never know where, I feel like with journaling, you never know where it's going to lead you. Yeah. So I would say it definitely helps me get clear with whatever it is and if it is a good decision for where I'm at right now. And also I like to use journaling too when I'm feeling super judgy of myself to use it as a tool to be kind and compassion and, and like forgive myself like for whatever it is that I'm feeling caught up on. Like, okay, like let that shit go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I love that you said you, you're using journaling for more of like manifestation because this is literally the um, thing that I've been focusing on this week is it, I was like doing like trainings and learning about manifestation journaling because at some points I was like I'm just going through the motions to like do journaling and I was like I'm not really getting anything from it so um 
you know, asking those prevalent questions like, oh, what is serving me right now? What is not like going deeper in questions to start journaling about them and then being able to journal specifically for manifestation about the future, like what, what you're going to move to make it. So, um, so I'm, I'm dabbling in that right now, like diving in and I'm super excited because I'm such a visual person that like, I felt like that was a really hard thing for me to actually like manifest what I wanted because I can tell you what it is, but like to actually like sit with it and feel it. Yeah. Tap into the emotion point, of like, it. That's a whole different thing for me. Yeah, I actually, in the speaker course I'm doing right now, she had us mark out how much we wanted to make from our speaking and get, or po possibility, but also yeah, like with money, because people will, will associate money. We want to make X amount of money um, a month or a year, whatever, but like really putting a purpose for that money and mm. then emotionally connecting what it's like, you know, to take the three kids and the hubby here or to get your dog, you know, like those kind of things. And really like, and then if you're very visual, closing your eyes, you know, and seeing it and making that connection is so powerful. Yeah. yeah I, that work. I believe that works. Like, <laughs> right. You, I mean, you said that your husband is the byproduct of that. So <laughs> right. people, people watching, like there's another helpful hit. <laughs> And when you uh, want to like, know more about know, that, like, God, you can Brittany. God, the universe is like, oh, written? I see that. But really, like everything is energy. So it's the vibration that we are in as we are, whatever its source that is, whether it's prayer, gospel, or singing, or dancing, or running, when you're in that high vibration, it's like creates that ripple effect in your life and in the world. So that's, your journaling positive things is good for the world. <laughs> Yes. Do your part, people. Do your part. <laughs> Journaling <laughs> peaceful things. <laughs> That's so awesome. No, but for real. So, um, so now that you obviously have been more equipped with tools to help you move through, and what I like to say is, like, you're living more fearlessly. And I'll point out that, um, fearlessly to me is about showing up knowing that you can make it through right like you are capable and confident enough to figure it out because everything is figure outable fearlessness is not having no fear it's about stepping into it and knowing that you're going to grow whether it's a good decision or a bad decision like there's growth and um, all good things that will come from it in some way <laughs> so now that you like are able to live more fearlessly Brittany where do you see yourself five years from now? And everyone's like, I don't know what that looks like. But if you did, if you could dream that up and manifest that, where do you see yourself in five years? I would like to be doing more public speaking and in a way that's very inspiring and moving for the people that listen. Like I really like have a solid message and able to communicate that clearly because it's something that I am working on. Like I, I have a met putting like we talked, like we talked about in the very beginning, like all the past, all the struggles that you learn into words and expressing it in a beautiful way. Like I see myself being able to do that. And then also traveling a lot with my husband and doing retreats like throughout the world, wellness retreats, inspiring retreats and feeling more confident and aligned with my God's given purpose and just enjoying life in a peaceful way. Like feeling really just grounded. I, and another like vision that I really have for myself is to be really spiritually grounded <laughs> and be able to just like see like the truth in the matter. Cause I, I do feel like now, even though if somebody asked me a deep question and I can think about it, I can really see the light in the, you know, but to just somebody brings me a bunch of crap. Sometimes I'd be like, well, that person was so wrong. And you know, that kind of thing. So to be able to be um, a really solid source of light for people in a way that like people appreciate not in like a weird stuck up way or anything like that. Never. That could never be you. Um, no, I love that. That's awesome. I definitely see that for you. Super excited with your Costa Rica retreat. Is that happening in 2021, right? It is in April. Yeah. And I hope you're there. 
I know. <laughs> Me too. I feel am, amazing. I'm manifesting that. That's like, going to be the first yeah, like. I know. I'm going to put your journal, journal and manifest and feel. <laughs> Rebecca's there, photographing all of us. <laughs> Woo. I, love it. <laughs> I know seriously and it's gonna be amazing so um so to wrap this up where is the best place for the viewers to connect with you Brittany learn about your retreats all the amazing things that you're doing just connect with you where's the best place well really the best place is my phone number but I don't know if I should give out my phone number here <laughs> the you best can message way to, her for that <laughs> yeah you're just kidding the best way to find me really and get the most updated information i would say would be on facebook under Brittany cano or faithful fitness by Brittany. i do have a website which is faithful fitness by Brittany, but the most up-to-date stuff is usually on my facebook account cool. i have instagram too but facebook i'm a facebooker awesome yay well this was so awesome to have you on here thank you again for your time and sharing about your story and the tools that are helping you live more fearlessly and i just totally appreciate you thank you thank you i appreciate you too you're so inspiring keep it up and i want to ask you what's your five-year vision oh my goodness so i mean my vision is definitely that i'm traveling with my family and that i'm able to inspire people on a deep level um, because I'm all about the human connection and that involves doing photography around the world and my family is nearby with me experiencing life through different cultures different foods like all of those things I have always dreamt of having my kids learn through life experiences more than a sit down shut up classroom so that is definitely all of the moves that we're making um, we're going for that there is no doubt in my mind that you will make it happen. <laughs> I got goosebumps. I like, I think consider it done. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Literally, I've had that vision since I was like 12 when I first started thinking about kids. Like, it's crazy. Then it'll happen. Like, I always oh, have a yeah. vision too to travel the world and like, I always wanted to be on stages, that kind of thing. And I, and I think that those, those dreams we had as kids, like that's our calling. Our dreams are seeking us. Rumi says what you seek, there's something like what you seek is seeking you too. And it's so yep. true. Yep. Very Absolutely. true. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, and everyone that's watching, thank you. Yes, thanks, Remember guys. to love yourself and live fearlessly, guys. Let us know your favorite takeaway. Let us know a tip that you loved, anything that you can share with us. We would love to hear from you and um, we'll see you guys on the next show. Go connect with Brittany and talk to you later.